presentation will be by Heather Pembroke. Uh, she will be speaking on the subject of wilderness streams in the Green Mountain National Forest, creating a chemical baseline. So Heather is a 1992 graduate of UVM's School of Natural Resources. She has had the great fortune to work with Jim Kellogg and the Vermont Acid Lake Program since 1995, hiking over hill and dale to sample remote lakes. Lucky her. <laughs> Heather calculated the critical load for 39 acid lakes to determine a statewide um, PMDL. With chemical recovery of these lakes underway, she has great hope that Vermont's acid lakes will biologically recover during her lifetime. So please give a warm welcome to Heather. <laughs> about the 10 minutes format. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put everything up front and then we're going to have great photos at the end. So it'll just be like beautiful scenery at the end. Um, I'm going to talk today about some wilderness stream sampling. This was done as a collaboration between the um, State of Vermont Watershed Management Division, who I work for, and the U.S. Forest Service, the Green Mountain National Forest, um, with Jen Wright and the uh, folks down at uh, Green Mountain National Forest. Um, so, um, so why do we get the great task of going out and sampling wilderness streams? Most of the time when we're out sampling, we're, uh, or oftentimes we're below sewage treatment plants, you know, the, the, the areas that we uh, spend a lot of time collecting phosphorus, nitrogen, and other um, contaminants uh, or nutrients. On. Um, so we, as the state of Vermont, we in, in the Watershed Management Division, we have the responsibility of maintaining, um, protecting, restoring, enhancing, something like that, um, uh, the rivers and the, and the water bodies in the state of Vermont. Essentially, we're out there. We're, we're supposed to make sure that these things don't they, they don't get hammered. You know, a lot of the streams um, they've gotten hammered over time, and um, our job is to try to either bring them back or prevent that from happening. Um, within the Green Mountain National Forest, they have wilderness areas. Um, uh, the speaker this morning was talking about wilderness areas being designated in Vermont. And luckily, we have eight wilderness areas in Vermont. And um, the Green Mountain National Forest, uh, they have the, the responsibility of protecting and managing those wildernesses to be in a, um, a, a, a condition that is untrammeled by man. Um, and as we all know, uh, air pollution doesn't respect those kinds of boundaries. And so a lot of these streams throughout Vermont have had impacts due to acid rain. And even though acid rain has um, <coughs> improved over time, it still has a lot of historical impacts. A lot of the, um, uh, a lot of the base cations, earth metals, all the things that help trees grow, and insects grow, exoskeletons, a lot of that stuff has gotten leached out of so forest soil. So we wanted to take a look at these forest, um, at these wilderness streams, and see what condition they were in, because we have a lot of information on the Rock River, on the Platte, on you know some of these big streams, that, uh, big rivers that contribute a lot to Lake Champlain or some of these other hot topic um, areas. But we don't actually have a ton of information, and in some cases we have zero information on on uh, these wilderness streams. So um, we went and we, uh, Green Mountain National Forest in the state of Vermont, uh, chose 10 streams, uh, the streams mostly that we didn't have any information on. Um, as Keith said, it's, the ideal would be to have a continuous monitor on a stream. A stream is different than a pond. A pond you can actually characterize fairly well with a few samples per year. Um, streams are another, it's a whole other beast. Um, but we decided that we could handle doing three times a year, and we're hoping to do this over the next um, uh, two years, for a total of three years, uh, sampled in the spring, summer, and fall. The five wilderness areas that we went to, um, the five out of the eight that exist in Vermont, <coughs> are um, Aiken, Big Branch, Patel, Bristol, and Redlow. The water chemistry that we analyzed is very similar to the water chemistry that we analyze on a, a lot of our acid lakes in Vermont. We have a long history of uh, sampling acid lakes, and there's a great poster out um, outside which uh, looks at some of the uh, acid lakes uh, results that we've had in Vermont. But we basically went for the classic acid rain um, parameters, uh, alkalinity, pH, conductivity, the color, like how tannic, how, you know, they clear, is it stained lake? Um, the, these are the base cations that um, are the things that help buffer uh, a water body against acid rain. Um, here, are these, these are 
two major um, acidifying components, sulfate and nitrate. And then just for kicks and grins, we threw in nutrients, even though it's in a, a wilderness area. It's really nice to know, you know, during huge storm events or, you know, is there some wetland upstream that might be contributing um, uh, some nutrients downstream? Uh, fish surveys were also conducted and uh, temperature probes were installed and left over the course of the season. So what did we learn? Um, essentially what we learned was a lot of these streams are sensitive to acid rain. Uh, they tend to have the lowest pHs in the spring, which makes sense because you got a whole winter's worth of snowpack that collects um, acid pollutants and then oftentimes over a very short period of time it, it flushes into the stream and causes acidic conditions, sometimes acid shock. Um, so Almost all of our streams were uh, sensitive, or in a classification that we would call either extremely sensitive, moderately sensitive, or somewhat sensitive to acid, um, acid rain. The only one that wasn't was McGinn, um, which I'll show you uh, the location of, um, down in well, an area that actually has some calcium in the bedrock, so surprise, surprise. Um, and uh, nutrients were low all year round, again, no surprise, but again, it's, it's, it was three sampling periods and we were intentionally trying to av avoid, in this first year, uh, high runoff events. We kind of wanted to get the baseline, like what, what, what's the range of conditions that we can expect. So um, over the next several years, we're hoping to continue this sampling and to throw in some macroinvertebrate sampling. Um, we, uh, <coughs> I work with the biomonitoring unit, the um, monitoring assessment unit, we use macroinvertebrate surveys a lot to classify our streams and say whether they're healthy or not because, you know, you go out and you collect a water sample once and you know what's going on that day, but macroinvertebrates and fish live there all the time. And so they're sort of the canary and coal mine, they're very good estimates of long-term health. So um, we have, um, we do have macroinvertebrate sampling in some of the streams we went to, but we want to, um, we want to add to that. Um, so here are the areas from north to south, of the, the, the places that we got to go to were um, north and Gilmore, Gilmore Pond Outlet. So um, if anybody knows Rocky Dale Gardens up in Bristol, um, we parked in their uh, parking lot and we hiked out to this um, absolutely gorgeous stream, um, the North Pond Outlet. Uh, Gilmore Pond Outlet was just a little bit south of that. Uh, Bear Wallow was right off of Route 100 in Warren. Uh, George Brook was, um, oh gosh, that was like a 125. Um, Grindstone, heartbreakingly beautiful stream. Just uh, one good reason of doing the sampling is these are, you just, you can't believe how beautiful Vermont is sometimes. It's just, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I, 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 I asked Jim Deschler, um, who's one of our, um, one of our, uh, one of my coworkers to come with me because he's a, one of the many talents is he's a photographer. And so the next few photographs actually are, are some of the photos that we took during the fall, which is, you know, when the leaves are down, which is kind of a crummy time of the period of the year to go and take photos, but they're still absolutely gorgeous. So anyways, um, went down to Lost Pond Outlet, another just absolutely stunning, stunning uh, stream. Um, again, this is, uh, uh, Historic brook, very nice, and then all the way down here to the west branch of the Deerfield River, which is pretty much right on the Massachusetts border. Um, okay, so here's North Pond Outlet. Um, these crashing streams with just moss everywhere, a really clear stream, lots of uh, leafy organic matter in the stream, just a beautiful, beautiful um, stream. Very, you know, really nothing going on in the in the watershed, being in the wilderness area. Um, Gilmore Pond Outlet, you can see how there's a much more tannic, um, which actually helps the biology because um, uh, organic acids actually help bind up with aluminum in waters, and aluminum can be toxic to aquatic uh, biota, so actually a tannic sometimes is actually really helpful in acidic conditions. Um, Bear Wallow, this is right off of Route 100. Um, clear, beautiful, crashing stream. <coughs> um, George Brook, this is right above Texas Falls, if you're familiar, um, off of 125. Um, a little bit lower gradient stream, but again, just absolutely gorgeous. This, I don't linger. I, I'm, I'm a pretty quick person. I don't linger. I go to my sampling site, I do my thing, I get out of there. I could not be torn away from this site. This is just, I mean, in some ways you want to protect this. Oh, don't tell anybody this is absolutely gorgeous, you know, but this, if, 
if you get how much time do I have? Zero? One. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, um, Goshen Brook Trib. It's, it's nice because we had a range of, of streams here. We had some of the big crashes with the big substrate, and then we had more of a winding stream. This is Goshen Brook Trib near um, uh, the uh, Middlebury campus. Um, uh, this pond, this stream, Smithbrook, we have a ton of um, uh, macroinvertebrate data from this. this is, uh, we've monitored this one for a long time. Um, <coughs> this is the McGinnbrook. This is the one that's different than all the rest of them. This one is, you can tell, there's um, a maidenhair fern, it's a sugar bush, it's a much more so, you know, rich soil. Um, and this is the one, this is the only one that wasn't um, acid sensitive. And then this one, this is the most acid sensitive. This is the one that was uh, west branch of the Deerfield River. We have acid lakes that are in this area. I've never seen a stream like this before. It's, it's, it's very colored water, which, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of wetlands, so that makes sense. But all the rocks, both in the stream and outside of the stream, are covered with moss. Every single surface in that stream is covered by moss. It's, it's, it's fascinating. So I hope we get to go back next year. And that's it. <laughs>